Hi everyone, I bring to you some great news from Slovenia. We have a young talent who has won the tournament with a score of 8 out of 8. And this is a phenomenal performance. Who is this young talent and why is he the talk of the town currently in Europe? I'll tell you. Let's have a look. The player whom we are talking about is none other than Leon Mendonca. He's there on the frame and I would say then there were six talents in top 20. You know, we have already Gukesh at number three. This is the list of top 20 juniors in the world below 20. We have Gukesh at number three. We have Arjun at number five. We have Prag at number seven, Nihal at number eight and Raunak at number 11. And now Leon has reached number 16, but he's also gaining 12 ELO points, which haven't been added here, which means that he will reach 2593. The boy is just 17 years old. He's born in 2006 and extremely talented. Just to show you what he has achieved here at the hit open in Slovenia, he has beaten just about 2300s in second and third round and 2400s then a 2500 brunello and then nigel davis in the eighth round and he is reached eight out of eight gaining 24 elo points with a performance of 3200 and also these are the standings he has won the tournament with round to spare with two points difference already which is just phenomenal when i actually messaged him saying congratulations leon you know what his reply was the tournament is not over yet, Sagar. And I was like, yes, Leon, please, all the best. Play well in the last round. But that's the kind of spirit you need in order to become a top player. And uh, this is how uh, Leon performed in his previous tournament. He played at the bad Vurishofen tournament where he scored seven and a half points, gaining 12 ELO points there. And so he's completely on a roll right now. And we hope that this continues and he's able to break into 2600 and beyond. I'm going to show you a miniature game that he played to beat GM Nigel Davis in the penultimate round of the hit open. And let's go to the board. Uh, here, Leon has the white pieces. And Nigel Davis is black. Game starts off with 1d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3 d5 knight c3 and we have the queen's gambit declined but with the knight bd7 variation now here the main moves are you know bishop f4 bishop g5 but leon goes for the move queen c2 and this is his preparation it could be that he's inspired by vidit gujarati he plays this a line uh, he plays this line quite a bit d takes c4 e4 controlling the center getting two strong pawns there c5 this is still theory now you can either take on c5 or you can take on c4 he takes first on c5 bishop takes bishop takes and now a6 white castles black plays queen c7 and leon now plays his queen to e2 the position is kind of equal out of the opening all good black can now play bishop d6 later on he can castle maybe hope that he can get b5 bishop b7 it seems like a normal position that's building up but nigel davis gets a little bit tricky here he plays knight to g4 and he tells leon well my idea is to look at the h2 square in case if i can get something and also i want to control the dark, dark squares by putting my knight on e5 or this knight now, bishop b3 makes a lot of sense and uh, there was a game already of Romanishin here uh, and uh, it seems like white is slightly better because knight g4 is not particularly a great idea. But Leon played g3 and perhaps this was not the best because after b5, bishop b3, bishop b7 and shot castle, I think black is doing fine. But instead he went knight g e5 and this allowed Leon to take take and now i was expecting him to play bishop b3 when later on he may be able to maybe go king g2 f4 all these ideas in the air maybe bishop f4 but leon surprised i guess one and all with bishop f4 i think uh here black can still castle and have a fine position playable position but he went for the move g5 
and this is where things start to heat up. Nigel Davis, who's a very experienced GM and has also, you know, made several videos for Chessbase, for other platforms, you know, excellent uh, player in general. He is saying to Leon that, look, if you move your bishop away from f4, my idea is to take on c4. If you take with the queen, I'll take on f2 and then you lose your queen. Okay. And if you were to play bishop e5, I'll take queen e5. And here black is doing excellently because he has great control on the dark squares. Keeping all of this in mind, it felt like Leon was now sort of pushed to a corner. But the boy simply chopped the pawn on g5. And this is the best move in the position. Now, the Nigel Davis took on c4 and he asked Leon, what's happening? You know, you've given me a free piece. Of course, you're not going to take back here because after bishop f2, you lose the queen. So what was Leon's idea? Well, Leon brought his rook to c1 and he tells his opponent that, look, now you are in a pin. You know, some kind of a very different kind of a thing has happened on the c file because now if the queen moves away, then the c4 knight hangs. And if you move the bishop away, then I can play b3, move the knight, and then my knight can jump in, giving a discovered attack here. So it's like black was trying to give a discovered attack, and now it's white who is doing it. It's like things have turned around. Uh, that being said, rook fd1 was a more accurate way to do things, uh, threatening rook d8. And if you now go, let's say, knight d6 or bishop e7, then you come back bishop f4, queen c6 and rook a c1. In this way, you have complete control and you are able to push down uh, the open c file. Uh, but he went rook a c1 and now very good move played by Nigel was rook g8. And I really like this move because now you can't play bishop f4 which you wanted to do because of queen takes f4. So bishop h4 unfortunately had to be played and now uh, bd7 and the position is very complicated. A line could go knight a4, take on a4, queen c4 attacking a4 and c5. Uh, you play bishop b5, I take, 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 take and the position remains very complicated. This is just one illustrative line. But he went b5 here, which is very natural because you are kind of defending your knight. But Leon just pushed the knight and he's like, you go back. And if you are planning to go back, let's say knight e5, then I can go b4. <laughs> I'm going to push you away as well. And then knight d5 and it's game over. So very interesting play. Nigel Davis now decided he'll go queen f4. Very interesting move actually. Because you can't take the queen. It's pinned. The pawn is pinned. And if you were to not address it, then your bishop is hanging. Like if you say take here, then I take on h4, black is better. But Willian simply played his king to h1 and he said, now Nigel, your queen is hanging, your knight is hanging, what is your plan? So Nigel Davis said, my plan is to go queen d2. And this is where you have to find the final move. What did Leon play? Think of a pretty move here. So, one way to continue, a very uh, uninteresting way is to take on d2, knight d2 and play rook fd1 when the knight is trapped. But that's not so cool. The cool move is rook fd1 or rook cd1. The move that Leon played was rook fd1 and the nice point is that if you take here, it is checkmate. So, after rook fd1, Nigel Davis resigned the game and Leon had scored a brilliant victory here. And with this, the young boy is really on the ascent and we congratulate him for a fantastic performance. Last round, we are going to witness him uh, taking on, we already have the pairing here. He's going to take on Domen Tisaj, who is an FM from Slovenia. And we hope that he makes it 9 out of 9. And uh, we will try and get him for an interview after the event is over. For now, this is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye. By the way, did you like the quality of this video? This is our first video on YouTube channel, which is recorded in the studio, um, like me doing analysis alone. So I hope that you liked it.